welcome to the first ever Proverbs 31 morning show. We are so excited to be with you this morning. My name is Maddie Vincent, and this is my co-host and friend, Macy Mosley. We are so excited that this day is finally here. You may be wondering, what exactly is the Proverbs 31 morning show? Well, we're glad you asked. The morning show is us creating the morning show we've always wanted. It's full of all the things you love about tuning into your favorite morning TV show host, but filled with the biblical truth and wisdom that we all need to get through our days. How's it gonna work? We will meet right here on Facebook on the third Thursday of every month, where we will talk about relevant biblical truth we'll have community, and of course, we'll have fun. Like any good morning show, I think it's time that we start with a few headlines. So here's the latest and greatest of the Proverbs 31 Ministries news. I think this is really exciting, Maddie. This week, we are celebrating the 10 year anniversary of our online Bible studies department here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. If you are an OBSer, you know how fun and exciting the online Bible studies community is. And we are just so pumped that it's been 10 years of online Bible studies. Is there anyone watching that has been part of online Bible studies for the full 10 years? We have your comments right here, so leave a comment we want to know hi everybody I see you um, Jennifer and Lisa and Carol and Beth and Lucille we're reading your comments as we're going and so we want to know if you've been part of online Bible study for 10 years for five years for five minutes we yeah. want to know leave a comment uh, the next headline is that on Tuesday our president Lisa Turkhurst hosted a Q&A on the Proverbs 31 Ministries Instagram. It was so stories. fun. It was so fun. She answered so many great questions that you guys had. Um, Macy, what were you, some of your favorite questions that she answered? I liked all of the questions she answered because <laughs> you know Lisa, she's just so wise. But I thought one question that was asked that she answered was super interesting. Somebody asked how they should pray for their adult child. And being on the social media team here at Proverbs 31 Ministries, mm -hmm. we see people all the time asking for prayer requests for their adult children and trying to figure out how to best love them and lead them. So I loved that Lisa answered that as all of her children are adults. Yes, it was such a great time to just get wisdom from Lisa. If you missed it, um, you can go to our Instagram account. It's highlighted under Q&A. Um, and if you're not part of our Instagram community, come on, hang out with us yeah, over there. Join us. It's join super us. fun. Our next headline is that we are three weeks into our first five study on Ephesians. And let me tell you, it is a good one. If mm -hmm. you're doing the study, let us know in the comments. We would love to see who all has been joining us for this journey in Ephesians. Mace, there are always so many fun things happening here at Proverbs. Um, we love it. It's so great. I don't know if you guys know this, but Proverbs 31 exists so that you can know the truth and then live the truth because we know it will change everything. So every social media post you see, every online Bible study you participate in, um, the first five daily teachings you read, even our encouragement for today, daily devotions that end up in your mailbox, they all point you to the Word of God because we know that when you know the truth of God's Word and live it, it will change your entire life. That is right, Maddie. Those are just a few of our headlines here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. But what we really want to know is what's your headline? What's your update? How has your morning been going so far? Wherever you are, you might be well into your morning. Your morning might just be starting. I know I saw a minute ago somebody from South Africa was commenting. So it's actually afternoon for them, which is really cool. That's this why I love social media. This is a global morning show. I know. Wow. This is global. So fun. But we just want to know how you guys have been doing. And I want to know specifically, what is one thing that's brought you life this week. It could look like a walk with a friend, maybe it's a book you're reading, a devotion or a Bible study you're doing, or it could be an extra large Diet Coke. Let us know in the comments what that one thing is that has brought to you life this week. We would love to read them and share a few of them. What's one thing that's brought you life this week, Mads? You know, something that is really fun right now is I have a sister who is pregnant. And so every 10, 15 minutes, I text her name ideas for the new baby that's coming in Aww. July. So that has brought me a lot of life this week. It's been a lot of fun. 
Um, Mace, what about you? That is really fun. <laughs> it's so fun, and I hope that I pick the name that she chooses <laughs> so that I can live the rest of my life saying that I named You'll this You'll have to update us when we have our morning show in July. You'll have to let the people know if she chose your name suggestion. I know. Or so not. far, I've suggested Evelyn and oh, call her Evie. That's so, cute. Let's hope. I like that. Yeah. Well, speaking of babies, the thing that has brought me life this week also has to do with a baby. My husband's coworker and his wife just welcomed home their first baby girl. She's a beautiful, healthy baby girl. She's really tiny and precious. And I got to meet her last weekend, Aww. which was really sweet. And when we were at their house getting to meet the baby, I also got to meet their dog. I love dogs and I love babies, so it was a win-win, but listen to this, Maddie. This, I think, is like I'm the ready. cutest thing. <laughs> I don't know where this is going, this, but I'm ready. This dog, he has a chocolate lab, and they were telling us that the chocolate lab, he's like a few years old, he has this blanket that he keeps in his dog crate. And whenever he's feeling sad or anxious, when his owners have to leave, he will go and cuddle up with his blanket. And they were telling us that since they brought the newborn baby home, whenever the baby cries, which is a lot, newborn babies cry a lot, the dog will go and get his blanket from his crate wow. and bring it to the baby to try and comfort the baby. Oh my goodness. I have been thinking about that all week and it is continuously bringing me life because I think it is just the cutest thing. That story is so pure. I do not know what to do with it. Should we check in and see what yeah. some of the people commenting said? Let's see. Um, April says that her quiet time with God this morning gave her life. I love Aww. hearing that. I love that. Um, Susie is going to see her daughter and her grandbaby. That is so fun. Susie, I hope you have fun with your daughter. Aww. Roland says baking and listening to First Five and our podcast brings her joy. Wow, I love that. We love that. Thanks I see a lot of people that. in the comments saying that they're dealing with um, COVID-19. So we just want you to know that we are praying for you and that we are praying health and um, all over your families. Yeah. Um, Mace, I think it's time for something fun. Oh, I'm all about something fun here on Friday Junior. What about a giveaway? I love giveaways. So on Tuesday, we launched our latest online Bible studies on Lisa Turker's new book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. Discover how to move on, make peace with painful memories, and create a life that's beautiful again. And it's not too late for you to join. Yeah, that's right. Um, this study started on Tuesday. It's not too late to join, and we really want you to join. So we thought, what would be a better way to start the Proverbs 31 morning show than giving away a copy of Forgiving What You Can't Forget? Wow. But Macy, this is not just some old regular copy of Forgiving What You Can't it's Forget. It's not. We happen to know Lisa, and we got it signed <gasps> just for Look our Proverbs 31 morning show Aww. viewers. Look at that sweet note. There's a sweet note. So... How do they win this book? How do it's they enter? It's super easy for you to win, and you're actually going to enter into this giveaway right now. All you have to do is answer this question in the comments. Here's the question. Are you a coffee person, a tea person, or neither? So take a minute, answer that in the comments. We would love to hear how you drink your coffee or tea, or if you don't drink coffee or tea, how do you survive the taste? <laughs> because I drink a lot of coffee. I feel like I have not found the right way to drink coffee yet. I don't really enjoy it. So if you have suggestions on how I should drink coffee, let me know. Yeah. I grew up with a dad who drinks coffee black with just two, I mean, big tablespoons of sugar. Very big tablespoons. And I just don't think that's it for me. So if you guys have suggestions of how I might like coffee, yeah. let me know. Give Maddie all your <laughs> tips. And while you're letting us know how you drink your coffee or your tea, we want to tell you five reasons that we think you should sign up for this online Bible study. Reason number one is that it's a clean and new slate. This is a new year. It's the first month of a brand new year. We're only a few weeks in, and there's no better way to start off 2021 than by spending time in community in God's Word. Absolutely not. Another really awesome reason you should join this online Bible study is you will meet new friends. When I say there is no community like the online Bible studies community, I mean there is no community like the online Bible studies That's community. So true. It is full of women that encourage you and love you, 
and it's global. There are women from all over the world that join us for online Bible studies, so you will meet new friends from all over the world. And not only will they be your friends, but they'll also become your support system. As you do the study on forgiveness and begin to walk through your own forgiveness journey and process all that Lisa is teaching you and all that God is teaching you from his word, these women will come right alongside you so that you don't have to do it alone. Um, it's also going to give you a fresh perspective. If you've struggled with the concept of forgiveness or boundaries, whatever relational situation you are in, this book is going to give you a new, fresh perspective mm -hmm. on how to tackle it and how to find peace and comfort in it. That's right. And the fifth and final reason that we think you should join this online Bible study is that it's a milestone study. Like we said at the beginning of the morning show, we are celebrating 10 years of online Bible studies. How cool would it be to say I was part of the 10 year study celebration for OBS? Why wouldn't you want to be a I part know. of this milestone study? If we have not convinced you to sign up for this Bible study yet, I don't know what else will convince you, but I think we should go ahead and pick a winner. <gasps> I think so too. All right, I'm looking through all of your comments and seeing all the coffee suggestions. I'm gonna take notes later so I know how to drink my coffee. Um, but the winner, can you give me a drum roll, roll please? Uh, oh, I just saw your mom, I almost picked her. Oh, hi mom. <laughs> hi Leslie. <laughs> Let's see, Leslie Kennedy, you won the book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. Leslie, if you want to go ahead and drop your email into the comments, our good friend Nicole, who is not on camera right now, will send you an email and get all the shipping information that you need. Yay. Yay. So exciting. Congratulations, Leslie. I love giveaways. Um, okay, let's see. The next thing that we want to talk about is some New Year's resolutions. Oh. I've seen a lot of people this year calling them New Year's intentions. Oh, I like that. Which I think is really cool. I haven't seen that before. Um, do you guys have any New Year's intentions or resolutions, if you want to call them that? What about you, Mace? Do you have any? I have been thinking about this. Um, I know we're a few weeks in to January, but I think I've decided that I want my New Year's intention to be that I'm more disciplined. And this is going to apply to my life in a lot of different ways, both small and big, um, from everything to making my bed in the morning when I get up, mm -hmm. which I know sounds really simple and for some people a second nature, but I really like my sleep and I like to sleep in, so that is an act of discipline for me. I also want to be more disciplined in the time that I spend with God in prayer, and I want to be more disciplined in spending time in His Word every day. I yeah. also just want to be more disciplined in taking care of myself. Yeah, I yeah. heard a rumor that oh. you bought an exercise bike. I did buy an <laughs> exercise bike. I did. I was persuaded. I bought the hype and I bought an exercise bike to help me accomplish this New Year's intention. So I'll have to report back. Yeah, in let us a know in the shows. next morning show. Yeah, and let you guys know how that's going for me. It'll be good accountability for I me. I think that's great. Yeah. I have set a really weird intention this year. I think just coming after the last year, I know that it was a difficult year for everybody, um, but something that I realized is that I felt very uncertain and insecure and unsettled and anxious so much of the last year. And my go-to way to cope with those feelings was not going to the Lord. And mm. so I want to set the intention in 2021 that when I feel uncertain or unsettled or insecure, that my first place I go is to God, which I know is like kind of a lofty maybe New Year's intention. <laughs> um, but as Macy and I were kind of talking, it, talking about it before the show, Macy had a lot of really good things to say about it. So I thought maybe we'd have a conversation about what this looks like and how not only me, but how all of us can apply this to our year in 2021. Yeah, well, I can't take the credit for what we're going to share today because our director of theology here at Proverbs 31 Ministries and also our good friend, Joel, Joel Mutamale. I'm sure I have watching. some text messages from him with <laughs> memes because he was sending those to us yes, before. Yes, he was. He was messing with us, but Joel is so wise. If you have ever listened to our podcast or seen him on a Facebook Live or read anything by him in the first five app, you will know that Joel has this amazing ability to break down these big and sometimes confusing theological concepts in a way that just makes sense. And he actually wrote a devotion for our encouragement for today devotions audience a few months ago about this very thing. 
he wrote about when we face uncertainty and anxiety in our life and how we can actually bring that to God. So we thought we would share some of that today. Yeah, I think that there is this really crazy thing that we try to do when we start to feel uncertain, which is we try to control the things around us. I do this. Yes. Macy, I know <laughs> I that do you this do this as just because well. we're friends. Um, but I feel, when I feel insecure and unsettled and uncertain, the first thing that I do is I start to control the things that I can and the people around. So maybe I'll start like a new house project. I painted my cabinets in my kitchen in 2020 because I felt so unstable in every area of my life. That seems like a really great way to put my energy, but I didn't take it to the Lord. Mm. Or I will watch the newest season of the Great British, British Bake Off <laughs> on Netflix because that feels more manageable than taking what I'm feeling to the Lord. Um, so what do we do? What do we do yeah. when we have all of these things that we want to control and we have all these fears and anxieties? Why should we take it to the Lord? Yeah, Joel talks about that in his devotion. I completely relate to those examples, Maddie. Joel actually says in his devotion that God's word tells us how we can handle uncertainty and surprise. God's word does not tell us to try and control other people or to control circumstances or to numb out or distract ourselves. But God's word actually tells us that when we face uncertainty, we can still have certainty because God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. And I know that word sovereignty is kind of a big word. It can be a little confusing, sound a little churchy. So we didn't want to make you have to go drag out a dictionary and look it up. <laughs> so we thought we would share the definition with you. God's sovereignty is God's authority, rule, reign, and control over all things. And basically what this means is that while we will face uncertainty in our lives, there is never an ounce of uncertainty for God. Yeah, I think that's really great. One of the most spectacular places in scripture where we can kind of just see God's certainty in the midst of uncertainty is when Paul is talking to the Athens at the Areopagus. Mm. I have literally no idea if I'm pronouncing Areopagus right. I see Joel in the comments. And so if I'm not saying it right, I'm sure he will correct me. Um, but basically the Areopagus was this place where people would come to solve the issues of humanity. Oh, wow. Whoa. That's a tall order. Um, <laughs> what are the issues of humanity? They come and they talk about politics and religion and family dynamics, probably all the things that you want to steer away from at a dinner party. This is the place. This is where they're talking about it. Um, and in this place that's full of so much uncertainty and so many different opinions and probably a good bit of anxiety, Paul says these really stunning words. Um, Paul says, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. And this is my favorite part. Yet, he is actually not far from each one of this. This is Acts 17, 24 through 27. Wow, that's so good. I love all of that. I think what stands out to me the most from that passage of scripture is where it says that God determined and allotted the time periods that we would be alive. I'm a little bit of a history nerd, and to think about all of the different time periods in all of history of humankind, and then to think that God chose and appointed for me and you to be alive right now in 2021 is mind-blowing mm -hmm. to think that it wasn't an accident, it wasn't a mistake, it wasn't a coincidence, but that God purposefully is in control and chose for us to be alive right now. And that brings me so much peace when yeah. I think about all the uncertainty I face in my life. Yeah. Something that Joel teaches us here at Proverbs 31 is that new theology is not good theology. So <laughs> we know when a theological concept is good, one, by knowing that it's in scripture, and two, knowing that people that came before us agree with what the concept that we're talking about is. And Joel shared this quote with us from Charles Spurgeon um, that says, 
God is near and therefore hope is near. And I love mm. that because we know that God is right here with us. We know that he's never far from us. He is never away from us. He is right here with us. Um, and because of that, we have hope. So when we're mm. facing uncertainty, when we're confused about what's happening in the world or in our lives, there's hope because God is near. And we don't have to numb out. We don't have to go other places to distract ourselves or control things because we have a God that is very present and he's bringing us hope. Wow. I love that. That quote makes me think of our mission statement here at Proverbs 31 Ministries yeah. that we were talking about a little bit earlier, that we want women to know the truth so that they can live the truth because we believe that it changes everything. And I think that's true of this Charles Spurgeon quote, that when we know that God is near, we can know that hope is near. And that can bring us confidence and that can be a place for us to root ourselves and find our identity when things are uncertain. And because we know that God is near and hope is near, we can share that with our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, our family members, and they can find hope too. And yeah. everything else is in God's hands. Yeah, and we can preach it to ourselves yeah. also. So as we step into 2021, I know that it's January 21st, but there's always a chance to set new goals and intentions and resolutions because God's mercy is new every morning, not just every new year, every morning. So Love on January that. 21st, 2021, we're making the intention to go to God with our uncertainty and confusion because we know that he is near and that answers our original question of why should I do this well I do it because it's he's trustworthy and this mm. is a way better way for me to take all of my anxieties to God rather than the great British bake-off <laughs> <laughs> I love that Maddie that's so cool that we can have that confidence no matter what we face mm -hmm. what do you guys think about that do you guys relate to that tell us what you think in the comments we're reading them we see them come in so let us know what you think before we wrap up, we want to share a few reminders and announcements with all of you. Uh, one, don't forget to sign up for the online Bible study. This would be probably your last chance to sign up since it started Tuesday. You can take the weekend, catch up, Plenty don't of time. forget. We're going to link the sign up sheet in the comments below. Our friend Nicole's going to do it. We love Nicole. Say hi, Nicole, to everybody. Um, but we don't want you to miss it. We know that this book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget, is life changing. And it's going to show what the Bible says about forgiveness in a way that you've never seen it before. It's so good. Mm -hmm. February 15th, we are going to launch our brand new first five study on the book of Philippians. And we don't want you to miss out on that either. Our first five community is so amazing and there are so many cool ways that you can process mm -hmm. God's word and learn through the community. And you can find out all the details about joining us for that study by visiting firstfive.org or by downloading the free First Five app from the App Store on your smartphone. We hope that you'll join us for that. Okay, and don't forget, we'll be back with another edition of the Proverbs 31 Morning Show in February Yay! on the third Thursday. So February 18th, we'll be right back here. We hope that you come. And this time we're gonna have a special guest. She is the Senior Director of Online Bible Studies and First Five, and she's also Proverbs 31's mom. She is everyone's mom here at Proverbs 31. It's none other than Melissa Taylor. We cannot wait to have her on the show and we cannot wait for you guys to meet her and it's gonna be great. So don't forget the third Thursday every month we'll be right here for the Proverbs 31 morning show. Well friends, this has been so fun. We hope that this has been a break for you from your busy schedule and whatever it is that you're facing in your life today. And we hope that you will walk away encouraged and that you'll feel seen and known. And we would love for you to join us right back here next month for the next episode of the Proverbs 31 Morning Show. We're so grateful for you and we've had such a blast. All right. Thank you guys. We'll see you next month. Bye.